Hello, everybody. How are you? Good afternoon, Sam. Hey, good afternoon, Pam. How are you today? Good. Good, good, good. Can you guys hear me okay? Is the audio coming through clear? Yep. Perfect. When you lean forward, it looks like you're looking at my keyboard. What do you <laughs> got on your computer, Pam? <laughs> Thought we taught you better than that. <laughs> hey, Susan. How we doing? Good, good. How are you today? How are we adjusting to the new virtual real estate world that we're living in, at least temporarily? Hopefully this is just a week. So far, so good. We're yeah. That's good. We've still had, you know, several physical closings and stuff going on today here. So Yeah, good. Kind of half and half. Good. Um, I'm supposed to close on my house on Thursday, and I have not have, have not heard anything negative yet so far. So that makes me feel happy. Fingers crossed. Yeah, um, and I have some friends in uh, so I transferred from Pennsylvania like just recently. Um, so obviously, like a lot of my friends and contacts are still up there, and even with them shutting down the state, there's still a lot they were technically allowed to do or lawfully allowed to do. So um, I feel good about that. But um, there was 11, uh, we're doing a, like a basically like a team meeting every day uh, on Zoom in which um, we had uh, a, the gentleman from um, James from Shelter Mortgage and then uh, Kern from O'Kelly and Sorahan. They're both saying that, you know, there's a lot that we can do kind of virtually for closing and whatnot. So it's all good times. Feel positive about it. Uh, we'll get started here in just a, a few moments. We'll kind of work on realtor time because I'm sure that there's a couple of agents that are having trouble with just getting hooked up to the um, to the Zoom video function here. Uh, and I will apologize ahead of time. I have bribed my kids with both snacks and um, their little Kindle fires, but I bet you I'll get interrupted. So I apologize in the head, um, but uh, hopefully we wouldn't have interruptions from my, my children or pets today's uh, class. But it's bound to happen. All right. Let's see if I can get this up. Hey, um, Sam, should we have command up? Uh, it's going to be helpful if you have two screens for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, if you can, that might make it a little bit easier. Okay. Um, but you should be actually in pretty good shape, Pam, for today's class. All right. All right. Okay, and can y'all see my screen? Are you seeing my like ocean background with a a big rock? I don't see it. All right, let me see what I can do here. Share. How about now? There you go. Yeah, now I can see it. Works that time? Okay, all right, cool. All right, I'm guessing you can still see me in like the little tiny square and the little grid thing. Yep. Okay, all right, cool. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and get started. Then I'm gonna pull up command and get rock and rolling. Um, so today's class, this is uh, really technology orientation. So I just kind of walk you through, uh, and my goodness, is this really, really relevant now of all the different expenses that we have from a technology standpoint. Um, and a pivot or a shift that we're, that we're experiencing right now and what we're going into, mm -hmm. it's going to be really, really important. Whether you're a brand new agent getting into the industry, um, and, and I'm going to take a second on that too. If you're getting into real estate and um, we just went through this crazy little shift, don't be alarmed. I don't want you to second guess your thought of like, oh crap, I quit my day job and got into real estate or oh crap, I put a lot of weight into this real estate thing just for that, the, the market to crash. Do not worry. 
Um, Keller Williams, um, when you talk about like Gary Keller and his experience, we were founded um, during one of the most like epic real estate um, markets of all time, whenever interest rates were like 19, 20%. Um, whenever the market was absolutely volatile. So um, we have a track record of being through these shifts before. Um, and the really great thing about them is that every time that we go through them, Kevin Williams comes out actually stronger than our competition. Um, for those of you who know me, I've been actually, I don't want to say like preaching that we need a shift, but it was uh, a good thing for this to happen to us as a company. Uh, you know, all things aside with um, you know, the pandemic and the, the scary medical part of this, and then also just the financial instability of it. Um, as a company, Kevin Williams will absolutely come out stronger with this. So what I encourage you to do is pay really, really close attention to what's being told to you by, um, you know, your instructors and all of the education that we have, they will help you get through the shift. You have to double down on your activities. Um, real estate is hard. You have to lead generate and you have to lead follow up. You're going to have to do that twice as much in a shifting market. Um, however, you will come out of this so much stronger um, because of, of the education things that we have here. So don't, um, um, don't have any fear going into this. It's going to be a little bit different, uh, but we will absolutely get you through it. Um, now, for agents who have been in the business going through a shift, um, now, like Pam, I know, how long have you been in real estate? Have you been through a shift or two before? Or, or any other seasoned agent in the room? Like who's been through a shift? All right, so I may not have anybody, but. Um, Sam, I've been here since 05, so I've been through it. Cool, okay, okay. And what, what are some of the things that like you can help us get through a shift? Like what, what do you know about a shift and um, how does that impact your business? Just exactly what you said. Um, the only, you know, if we don't stay on top of it, um, you know, it, it does impact how we come out of it. But the other thing is, in some ways, it's an opportunity to grow your business because, you know, technically so many agents will drop, you know, their business while, while it's going on. So it's just a, it's an opportunity any way you look at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and in a shifting market, so like when you look at 2000, I always say 2006 because I was a new home construction. It felt like it started sooner for us. Um, but in 2008, whenever the bottom fell out of the market, that was a different type of shift. That was like truly an economic um, downturn there. This one's a little bit different. Um, we will see that economic fall, no doubt about it. Like it's going to happen. Um, we don't anticipate it being nearly as, as bad as 2008. Um, however, we knew the shift was coming. This is just probably about a year ahead of its time. We are expecting all markets to be kind of good for at least another year. But because of the coronavirus, this happened a little bit sooner. So um, we always talk about, you know, pricing your listings and, and doing things in your business to plan for the market you're heading towards and not the one you're in. And I always love the, the hockey analogy because I'm a huge hockey fan. Didn't even plan this, but I'm drinking on my Penguins mug. In hockey, you don't skate to where the puck is. You skate to where the puck is going. Um, you have to be ahead of the play. And that's just what we're going to be doing. We're going to be like doubling down on lead generation. And here's the really, if you hear nothing else from today's class, understand this. If you're lead generating and you're reaching out to your database, if you're calling people and they don't have a transaction, build the relationship. There's going to be a lot of folks who, you know, may have uh, an opportunity to buy or sell with you. Circumstances pop up where they lose their job or they lose their financing, things like that. Um, that does not mean the transaction is dead. It does not mean your relationship is dead. Find a way to come from contribution by any means. Um, really, really leverage all of the connections that you're going to make and see if you can help people with their lives because then you will make a consumer or a client for life, not just for one transaction. So um, I'm going to dig into some different things that you can do to really um, manage relationships a little bit, a little bit stronger. Um, but this is going to be a relationship business and you're just going to have to pound the phones and really get in front of people and talk to them as much as possible. Cool. All right. I'm going to mute my mouse. Sir. All right, cool. So for those of you who are interested in jumping into command, we're going to go to uh, agent.kw.com. This is the website for command. So it's agent singular dot kw.com. And y'all can see my screen right now. And I was helping out Pam, gotta knock out that. <laughs> uh, so your password and your username, hopefully you guys all have a sheet that you've got from 
uh, Jennifer or somebody else, but it should just be like your username, not your, um, not your Keller Williams email address, but you'll have an individual username. It's usually your first initial and the last name, unless you're like me and it's a pretty common name, then you're gonna have some numbers on it. You should be able to log in. I know for a lot of you, we're using either Keller 181 as your password or Keller in your birthday. If you don't know, try those. And then you should be here. Is everyone on the screen? And feel free to like unmute yourselves. This is gonna be an interactive class, not just me kind of talking at you. Um, just let me know, are, are you seeing the screen like this right now? I am, yes. Right on, cool, thank you. All right, so we just wanna double check a couple of things. Um, we've gotten um, our onboarding and orientation up to a point in which uh, Jennifer has taken care of you for the most part. Um, however, I just wanna make sure that you have all of your connections in place. And we just want to verify that your marketing profile is complete as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, click on uh, my name in the top right hand corner, go to name and then go to settings. When we get to your name and your settings, this is where we see all of the, all of the different integrations that we have within command. So essentially what we've done is we've taken all of these off the shelf technologies that we've been paying for and buying for, for, uh, a number of years, we've ended those relationships with these companies, and we've built an app store around Kibben Command. So um, we have an exclusive data agreement with all these companies that says, we're gonna give you the coding, we're gonna give you the, the backend technology part of Kibben Command, as long as you promise not to take our data and sell it to a third party. Um, so when you see these integrations, just know that these are companies that you can trust, that your data is not gonna be sold, because that's the most important thing that you own right now is your data. Um, so if you have an account, you're gonna connect DocuSign, you're gonna connect Facebook. I'll show you how to connect ports here in a little bit, but um, go through your own profile and your settings here and connect everything that you have an existing account for. So uh, all of you should have a Google Calendar and all of you should have a Gmail because our Kevin Wings email addresses are part of the Google suite. Um, so go ahead and connect your Gmail account and connect your Google Calendar. You'll just click on the buttons that say like, you know, let me disconnect mine real quick. So for Google Calendar, just click on Connect Account. It's gonna pull up a pop-up to log in. I'm just gonna pick my at Kevin Williams one, and I'm good to go. Uh, always allow these permissions, because if you start playing with these, it's actually gonna uh, mess up the integration a little bit. Um, I don't believe that you have to rename like your firstborn son, Gary Keller, or anything like that. Um, there's nothing in here that's really too, too scary. Uh, but you'll just wanna go in, and once you see that uh, you have that integrated, your email address should pop up and everything will show up underneath the connected apps. Um, another one that's really, really important. Is there a murderer on the line? Did you guys hear that feedback too? Yeah. What was that? <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> oh man, okay. I don't know, I can't even uh, meet the person who it is. Oh man, okay, let me see if I can find that person real quick. Okay, we're gonna work through it. I think that was Marcus. Marcus, I muted you, buddy. If you need anything, just hit me up in the chat line. All right. Oh no, it wasn't Marcus. Where's that feedback coming from? Can you guys have me? I can't see it. It's not All right, Pam. Marcus, is it you? No, it's not Pam. Not Pam. It keeps showing up as Janine. I think somebody's trying to talk. Janine, okay, I do. I think we muted Janine. We muted himself. All right, cool. <laughs> all right, that was uh, that was creepy. Um, we're good now. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, but what you want to do is connect all of your apps. The one most important one that you probably don't have connected is if you just scroll all the way down in your settings. Uh, there's one at the very, very bottom called Command Mail. You'll want to check this one. Just click on Manage. And um, Command Mail, what we're doing is we're essentially creating um, a workaround to eliminate companies like uh, MailChimp and, uh, and Constant Contact. So I'm just going to go into Manage, and I'm going to pick my sender name and my reply to email address. So if the system, KW Command, were to send out any emails, um, they'll come from uh, this email address, and they'll reply to this email address. So um, I would highly, highly recommend using a professional email address. Don't have it be your like Sam smokes 420 at hotmail.com. That's not going to help you from a business standpoint. You want to have something nice, clean and professional. Don't have your AOL email. Um, I would encourage you to use your at KW, but 
Um, for those of you who have a vanity name for your uh, team or business, feel free to use that. Um, and uh, just know that if you, by chance um, you do send a lot of emails that's something you do with your database, you get 5,000 a month for free with your command. If you need to add to that, it's relatively cheap. You can actually add to that. I think it's like uh, 10 bucks a month for another 5,000. Um, but most agents aren't coming anywhere near that. So you get 5,000 a month for free through command, but just make sure that you um, change your center name and change your reply to email address. Cool. Once you have all of those connected, you are rocking and rolling. Um, we do have a couple added features like porch you will not see, um, but there are some other benefits that will help you out in the future. If you want to see the full app store that surrounds KDB command, you'll just click on the marketplace button in the uh, top right hand corner. Uh, that's right next to the notification symbol. And the marketplace is truly like our app store. Uh, so these are all of the extra integrations that um, you can either add on for free like Porch or there may be a cost associated with them. But again, your data will not be sold by using these. Um, oh, there's a new one, Home Jab. I don't know what that is. Uh, real estate photography, cool. Uh, but these are all the featured apps. You can kind of scroll through them. There are several different categories. Um, one of the, my, my favorites in here is Porch. Um, so when you connect to Porch, you just click on the app itself. And then uh, I think you click on like authorize or, or download or something like that. It'll tie into your, um, I think it says activate actually. It'll tie into your command dashboard. What's really, really cool about that relationship is that um, we can actually upload our uh, inspection reports. And um, can you guys see my screen? I got a, a chat from Hanin. Can you guys still see my command page? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Sam, do you have to have an Apple computer to do these apps? Nope. Nope. These are all cloud-based and on command. Okay. So okay. it should not matter if you're using Apple or, or Windows. Um, but what's cool about Porch is that I can upload my inspection report and use that as a negotiation piece. So. Um, instead of saying, hey, the inspection report shows that all the flooring is terrible, um, you know, I can get a local quote within, I think they say 48 hours, but it's actually much quicker than that, with local material and local labor costs built into it. Um, so if you have a seller or a buyer that's trying to beat, or beat you up from negotiations, you can use this to your advantage here. Uh, and there's a slew of them, but take a look at the, uh, the marketplace. I think Porch is probably one of the best that we have in there right now. Any questions so far? I'm trying to um, add ports and it's saying that it encountered an error. Um, okay. Unknown code, unknown message. Okay. Are no, you, I, I should have started the class with this. Are you in Google Chrome by chance? Oh yeah, I am. Okay. Is your Chrome up to date? And to check that, uh, do you have three dots up here in the top right hand corner? Or do you have an up arrow? Three dots. Okay. All right. Um, the, the last thing you can try, if this doesn't work, go into incognito mode. So okay. just look in the three dots and go to incognito and try again. Um, and that's just really, really good advice. Always use Google Chrome whenever you're using command uh, because we built Chrome, or excuse me, we built command on Chrome. Um, and then also if you're having like weird one-off issues like, like Casey was having there, just click on the three dots, go to incognito mode and that should fix it for you. Cool. All right, now let's get into this big bad beast that is command. Um, so one of the Kendall Williams life hacks that I wanna share with you is if you click on this red KW in the top left hand corner, this actually expands all of your tools and all of our names. Um, so I have all of these applets as we call them memorized forwards, backwards and what they do. Um, I don't expect you to be at my level, but if we're jumping from like contacts, to opportunities, to campaigns, if you wanna keep up with me with speed, just know that you can click on the red KW and you can expand or minimize uh, all of those, those applets as we call them. Now, when you talk about command, um, we've kind of built this for two reasons. Um, the first one is that um, we wanted to protect your data. So there were a couple other companies and uh, I don't like to talk smack because I actually do enjoy them as a, as a company. I think they're one of the few brokerages that actually do care about their agents. Um, but Remax, for example, was one of the largest real estate uh, companies and franchises uh, globally. We actually just beat them uh, two Januarys ago, January 2018, that we surpassed them as the top real estate company. One of the things that, that 
Remax really messed up on is that they had the opportunity about the same time that we did, Kevin Williams, four years ago, that instead of working with third party companies to buy their software and the technology, um, Keller Williams did a pivot and we decided to go in house. We built everything proprietary because we knew that whenever you use a third party company, um, one, you don't control much. Like you don't have any ownership of that. You have some licenses and you can use it. But if those technology companies that we're using decide to all of a sudden make a change and then add a freemium or a premium charge, you're going to have to pay it as an agent. Or if they decide to take your data and sell it to another brokerage, they all have the, the right to do so. Um, and I use the example of um, Commissions Inc. Is anyone familiar with Commissions Inc., which is a, a CRM and a, and a dashboard? No? Okay. So Commissions Inc. is essentially like a CRM. If uh, any of you are coming from a, another outside sales position, kind of like a sales force, kind of just like your, your database, if you will. Now, Commissions Inc. is a great tool. I've loved it. I've purchased it twice uh, whenever I managed the market centers up in Pittsburgh. I loved it. Um, great tool. However, there's a lot of money in some, some weird places right now. So Commissions Inc., as a technology company, was actually owned by a group of venture capitalists who also have a ton of stake into one of our, um, I don't want to say big competitors, but one of our competitors, which is EXP. So if you're a Keller Williams agent, and you're putting all of your clients' information in, you're putting all of your transaction information in, and you're using Commissions Inc., you're technically giving the data right into the hands of one of your biggest competitors. Now, what other industry would that, like, would you ever do that in? Like, when you talk about like your trade secrets and your other things, like you wanna protect your data, you wanna protect all of your insights. Um, so that's one reason why we did this. We said, hey, we're gonna stop, we're gonna break all of our relationships with all of these companies, we're gonna build this in-house. Because when you look at Amazon, you look at Netflix, you look at Uber, or as we call them, FANG, F-A-N-G, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, all of them have built their own technology. Google's not using Windows. They're using Google. They have their own platform. Um, Gary Keller had the, the foresight, like I said, about four years ago to really take a step back and say, hey, we're going to get mocked by the industry. We're going to get made fun of a lot, but we're going to do it the right way. We're going to protect our data. And, and they did exactly that. So we built command to protect our agents. The other part of this is that, and this is really, really important in today's climate, uh, and again, hopefully this is, this is uh, very, very short term, but when you look at the cost associated real estate, um, whether you were a brand new agent or if you were one of the top teams in the country, you're spending somewhere between $2,000 and $100,000 a year on technology. Um, so we've built this actually with a very close relationship with the, uh, the Loking Group. They're a um, Keller Williams team based in Houston, Texas. They're a franchise model. So they have the local group in a, in a couple different cities across the country now, but they have over 80 employees on the real estate team. So uh, if any of you are interested in actually growing a real estate team, whether you're a single agent today, or if your desire is to build a team, just know that we have the model to do that. The local group in Houston is incredible. They have 80 employees that belong to the real estate team. So when we looked at their business, whenever we were building command, we realized they're spending $100,000 on their processes with technology. And that includes salaries of people just cleaning up Excel sheets of, you know, if they wanted to send a postcard from their database, they had to take it out of like Boomtown, which is a CRM, take that Excel sheet, clean it up and put that into like whatever service they were using for their mailing. And then they had to go into social media and they had to clean up that different list. And they were just bouncing and leaving with an Excel sheet to Excel sheet and just got cumbersome, in which they had people literally just doing their full-time jobs, living in Excel, cleaning up their contacts. Um, which is absolutely insane. And then when you look at brand new agents, um, just not knowing what they don't know, using these third party services to do everything from like managing their transactions to managing their pipeline to managing their social media, they don't know any better and they're just getting caught up and spending about $2,000 a year on tech. We've been able to pee peel back a lot of this, some of the biggest expenses being like your marketing, your websites. We built a platform that is synchronized so which you can do all this in one place. So with that being said, the plan with command and what we've really built is we've taken everybody else's software, ripped it off and duplicated it, built it in house and put it into one website. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by command, that's okay. No one's expecting you for, for you to learn the entire thing because that's just like too much. I mean, this is literally the entire real estate process on one website um, and every tool that you may not need at this point in your business. Um, don't look to master command. 
uh, just look to master the things that are important and relevant to your business. So for new agents, that just may be your contacts. Um, for seasoned agents, that may be things like smart plans. Um, they're gonna walk you through kind of tool by tool, give you a very quick overview of which tool can do what uh, and how you can use in your business. But I would not recommend coming in and being an expert in command um, because that's gonna take away from actually focusing on your business, which is what is most important. Are we good so far? You can give me a thumbs up or, or a chat or whatever. Love you guys come up mute too and help me uh, get some participation. But um, so I'm just gonna go through line by line. So the first thing we have here is your contacts. So this by itself is what we call a database or a CRM. This is your client relationship manager. This is like a sales force if you're you know, from a sales background. Essentially, this keeps track of all of our contact engagements. So right now you can see I have 971 contacts in my database. Um, all of them are Kevin Williams agents within the Georgia Legacy Group. And what this allows me to do, excuse me, is I can come in and actually just see the, the track record. So with Adam Zenzer, he's an agent of the North Atlanta office. I can see his contact information. I have his telephone, his email address. Um, I have a database health score, so it tells me how much I know about him. I can add some really cool information about him, some additional contact information. Um, on the left-hand side, that is. On the right, if he were an actual client, I can see my interactions with him. So the timeline here is designed for me to talk with him and see all the lessons we've done. So um, I sent a text message out to the database on uh, 1030, that was probably yesterday or, or last week, um, just reminding agents of the YouTube channel that I have, I sent a text uh, to 900 agents in my database, and this tells me that uh, Adam did receive it. Opportunities tells me if I have deals going on with this person. Smart plans uh, tells me um, specifically what like drip campaigns or drip emails, what automated emails or text messages he's getting from the system. If I have any tasks that I need to do, so if I need to reach out to Adam for any particular reason, I have a note section. And then if Adam weren't a real estate agent and if Adam were an actual contact, I can set him up on an MLS search right here from the database. Um, so I can go ahead and create like search by neighborhood or zip code, put the minimum, um, you know, price, bathrooms, things like that, uh, and, and create a search for him on the online portal so you're not using things like the FMLS for that. Uh, so that's kind of like your overview of contacts. Let me go back here real quick. You can also do some bulk things within here. So I can come in here, check multiple people, and I can send things like text messages. I can add bulk tags, which I'll get into a little bit more here. Um, add them to emails. If I'm on a team, I can share contacts um, back and forth as a Rainmaker or to my Rainmaker. Add them to a smart plan. I can actually, actually export my contacts. So uh, if you wanted to do something where like you were you know, putting them all into um, a different CRM or a dialer, you could do that. And then you can also create printing labels here as well. Any questions on this? No. Cool. Nope. All right. The next tool is just tasks. Task is pretty cool in itself. Um, this is a checklist of all things I need to do today. So is anyone a list maker? Anyone love just creating lists of things they need to do to do for the day? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Sam, may I, may I ask a question about contacts? Yes. Uh, yeah. Who is this though? Please. This is Anu. All right, Anu. Uh, hey, so um, let's say I contact somebody in my contacts where I want to note down what my conversation was with them. Where exactly would I do that? Yeah, great. Great question. Thanks to know. Yeah. So if I had reached out to Adam and let's just say that I had called him on the phone, um, the way to log your interaction is to click on this plus sign right here and you can log an interaction. So I can add an activity, I can add a note or I can actually schedule an event, um, but you can add an activity. This will open a little screen so you can document this. So let's just say I talked to Adam today. I can write a little description to remind me of what my conversation was. Click save, and then I'll show up right here that I called Adam on March 23rd. Oh, great. I was doing it in notes, so that's the wrong place to do it. No, I know. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would save notes for like more important things like um, just like, uh, like bullet point stuff of like their kids' names or their pets' names, things like that. Um, okay. maybe like their buyer and seller information, but yeah, leave, uh, leave interaction or, or don't, don't put that in notes. You can actually log your activity here. And the cool thing about doing an activity is whenever I look at my overall view of my, my contacts and I sort this by last contacted, it'll show that I reach out to Adam. So 
the other thing I could do is I could sort this the other way and say like, oh crap, I haven't reached out to this person since February 19th. This is somebody who I need to give a call to. And I forget, do we, do we have to put in the date or is that automatic? The yeah, so when I, when I log an interaction, when I add an activity, uh, it'll put the date in right there, but you can change that. So if you were somebody I called yesterday, I can change the date, but it's preloaded for today. Do you see that? Okay, there? great. That's a great thing. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Cool. Right on. Great question. All right. Now, when I look at tasks, um, I don't have any tasks for today, but if I were to look at this all time, I can see, okay, I don't have any, but if I wanted to create a task, um, I can create a new one and I can just say, hey, this is something that, that I need to do. So this could be like order yard sign. This could be something that's just associated for me. I could do it any day or like at any point during the day. Or if I check this off, I can pick a specific time for me to get alerted. So if I mark this off to do it at 6 p.m., um, give myself a description. I can put that in there. I can put a website. And then there's also a really cool feature in here. So let's just say that you're not ordering a yard sign, but I need to um, schedule an appointment. Let me just delete this out real quick. I can um, add a contact. So whenever I pull up associate contacts, let's just say that this is something that I have to do specifically with Adam. I can pull it up and, and attach it to that person. So whenever I get the alert that says, hey, it's time to actually reach out to Adam and, and get the appointment, um, his contact information will come up right there. I don't think I'm searching for it um, at all. And create the task and we're good to go. So now if I go back and look at Adam, it'll tell me that I have a, a task with him. And you'll see that right here for tasks, schedule an appointment. So uh, this is another way for you to kind of um, keep yourself accountable to reaching out to people in a certain way. Um, but that's task in a nutshell. If you're on a team, um, there are opportunity tasks as well, and you can actually assign opportunity tasks. So as part of your, um, uh, your unique value proposition, if you have a certain agent or associate on your team, as long as they have their own command login, I can assign other people to do some of these tasks as well, which is pretty cool. Smart plans is the next tool. This is uh, pretty cool. Um, smart plans has finally got a lot of traction. This is something that took a little while to catch up with the rest of the command, but essentially this is your one-stop shop for automation. Um, now, if you're working with this for the first time, you will not have anything inside of my smart plans. You have to click on the Keller Williams library and pull them over. So this is the, the library of 10 smart plans that Keller Williams has created. You just click add smart plan. Uh, you can rename it if you choose to, but once you go through and add all of these, they'll show up underneath your library that says my smart plans. Now let me just go through a couple of these real quick. Some of the things that you'll wanna do, especially as a brand new agent, is just start getting data on your clients. Um, getting addresses is gonna be one of the most important things. We wanna know where your clients are living because we can actually send them real time um, market snapshots on what's going on in their neighborhood. So if you have any buyers or sellers who are a little bit weary of, oh my goodness, I don't know where the market's going, just say like, hey, would you love, um, you know, if I send you a, an update every two weeks on what happened in the market that um, during that time period, or uh, if two weeks is too aggressive, I can send to you monthly. And we can set up our clients on what we call neighborhood nurtures. So we have a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, and then we have a, where'd she go? We have a monthly neighborhood nurture, which is down here. Essentially, it's the same thing. Um, we, we send our clients uh, neighborhood information. What I love about this is that we have a relationship uh, that's exclusive to Keller Williams with Nextdoor. So Nextdoor gives us the ability to tap into their app and tap into their platform. We get the actual outline of every single neighborhood that they have. Uh, and then also we have all the markets, um, market um, information tied to just that area. So if I were to sign up to Zillow and get these like push notifications of like your emails, I'm getting the entire zip code of what's going on in real estate. We have it narrowed down to like a three street neighborhood or even smaller. So you're giving them very, very hyper local information that's super, super relevant. Whether they're a buyer or a seller, uh, they have great information that's coming directly from you. Now what I'd highly recommend, and we're gonna create a contact here in a little bit, um, what I'd highly recommend is 
you're going to put yourself in the database, like create a consumer version of you and then set yourself up on these, on these smart plans so that you get a look and feel for what these, um, um, what these come in as now. Sam. Yes. Hey, it's Jessica Buxton. Hey, Jessica. Um, hey, so you just go over that just one more second. Um, you said add smart plan. And if mm -hmm. I go to add smart plan under say the eight by eight, yep. um, my contacts don't, they're not highlighted and it says trigger events, not highlighted. So I, do I just, just say apply and where does it apply to? Uh, I'm not sure what you're seeing here. Let me see. So, okay. Are you on this page right here? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, so nothing, you're just going to name this. So this could just be like eight by eight. Um, right now this doesn't do anything just yet. These are kind of frozen. They're going to add to this. The plan is, and this is, this is really, really exciting. Can you guys still see me on the screen? Like can you yes. see me, my, my video as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, so the goal is, is we'll be able to wake up one day or not even wake up one day, but like, let's just say that I, I'm, I'm holding a, an open house and goodness gracious, I hope it's a physical one here soon. Let's just say that we're holding a, an open house and Jessica, you come to it. Whenever you exit the front door, I can pull up my phone and say, Hey Kelly, add Jessica Buxton um, to the uh, eight by eight or add Jessica Buxton to the open house follow-up smart plan. And oh. what will happen is by the time you get to your car, you're going to text a text message from me that's automated that says, Hey, Jessica, thanks for stopping in at one, two, three main street. It was so great to meet you today. Um, check your email tonight around eight o'clock. You'll get an email with more information you, about the you community. were, you were frozen there for about 10 seconds. Oh no. Okay. So let me just back up from the beginning then. So what, what will happen is that whenever uh, Jessica comes to my open house, I can say, Hey Kelly, add Jessica to my open house smart plan. And by the time you get to your car, whenever you're sitting in your car, you'll get a text message that's automated from me. That's the trigger that says, add Jessica to Smart Plan. Um, you'll, get a, uh, you'll get a text message that says, hey, thanks so much for coming to 123 Main Street. It's nice meeting you. Look for an email from me at 8 p.m. tonight. At 8 p.m. tonight, my Smart Plan will kick off this email that will say, hey, here's all the information that I promised you from earlier today. Again, it was so nice meeting you. Let me know if I can help you anywhere. And then from there, we're going to have the ability to just basically create like, uh, um, like a tree or like, um, like a spider web of logic that says, if Jessica replies, we go this way. If Jessica does not reply, we go this way. And then we have a series of like triggers of emails, texts, and phone calls that we can then uh, alert your system that goes down an appropriate path. Kind of like a choose your own adventure um, that will mm -hmm. automate your entire business, or at least your follow-up. That is going to be insane. Like when you think about all, all I had to say was add Jessica to open house smart plan and my follow-ups happening. That's right. Dynamite. So, but right now these are not anything that we're going to be able to use. Correct. You can, you can use these today. Um, they will become more advanced whenever we can actually access the categories and the trigger events right now. They're just, they're one, one adventure, not multiple. Um, so we don't have the triggers in place yet, but what will happen here, I can show you exactly. So yeah. if I'm looking at the open house follow up. So I just, here, I just added eight by eight new contacts. Yep. Just click add there. I, so I did, but where okay. does it go? What does it apply to? Nothing yet. So it'll, it'll go to your smart plan. So it should be in your library now when you go back. Oh, to okay. Top. I see it now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now if you want to add your contacts to it, you'll just click this plus sign over right here. Oh, okay. 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 And there you we can go. Pick as many contacts. You can search by it. You can do tags. You do all kinds of crazy things. That's what I was trying to get, figure out. Cool. But let me show you here real quick. And you can also edit a few of these. So like the eight by eight, I now have a pencil symbol that's active. Let me show you what these look like. Could you also run through the birthday one, please, Sam? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with this one, the trigger event is me adding a person to the smart plan. And then if I have my text messaging set up, I'll show you how to do that here. It says, hey, contact first name, last name. It's agent first name, last name from whatever team. Love to grab coffee with you sometime. Let me know what your schedule looks like in the next few days. Given today's market, I probably want to clean this up that says, hey, I'd love to meet with you virtually uh, and postpone this one. One of the things that I would do is that if I'm creating an eight by eight, I would maybe come in here, go back to the library and call this, where did my, um, where'd my eight by eight go? Where'd she go? My, okay, okay, right from my face. Um, so one of the things I might do now is add the smart plan and then I would name this like, 
I was being appropriate, but like my COVID plan. And then I would change all the verbiage from meeting in person to meeting virtually. When I go back to my smart plans, I now have a COVID plan. You go to page two, probably. I can edit my plan that say, would love to grab coffee sometime. Catch up on a Zoom call. With you to learn more about your search and just click apply. Now, if you want to build these out, you can actually create custom smart plans. I would highly recommend get a feel for these first, get a, get a feel for what they look like. Um, but you can tweak these to make them be anything, but we're just going to create a, a logic. Let me go back to a different screen. Cause I think that the touches make a little bit more sense from the overview. So far to look at the library, the eight by eight, when I look at view steps on any of these, the first thing that goes out is an automated text, which you can edit that says, hey, first name, last name, this is Sam Jackson. We'd love to grab coffee with you. It waits seven days, and then it's a touch task. So um, command isn't calling for me, command isn't emailing for me, but it's saying, hey, you should probably send this person an email. Here's what you should send them. It says, let's grab coffee is the subject, and then email them, first name, last name, or whatever. Uh, then we wait seven days, then it's a phone call follow-up, then we wait seven days, and then it's a text, then we wait seven days, then it's the neighborhood nurture, wait, activity, wait, activity. Um, does anybody know what, what an eight by eight stands for? Like what does literally eight by eight stand for? Eight touches in eight weeks. That's exactly it. And what's the purpose of that? So that uh, when you meet somebody for the first time and you get in touch with them eight different uh, times so that they're top, you are top of their minds? Exactly. That's exactly it. You killed it. Way to go. Um, yeah, so the eight by eight is, is meant to anchor this new relationship. So you're not going to put people that you know on an eight by eight. An eight by eight is meant just for new contact engagement. It kind of gives you that hint right here uh, that these are for people that I met at the grocery store, I met online uh, through a Facebook lead or, or whatever. Um, these are only new people that I'm trying to really anchor my relationship with that says like, Hey, I'm in real estate. I just want to let you know that I'm in real estate. I'm going to support that eight times across eight weeks so that next time you hear my name, you associate me with real estate and nothing else. Hey, Sam, I wanted to ask yes. you if I just want to send uh, just one email to all the people in my database saying, Hey, just wanting to see how, you know, hope all of you are well amidst these circumstances, et cetera. Just a very simple email. Where, which one would I pick? Yeah, um, that's not the easiest thing to do in command right now. Uh, that's the one thing that we're still working on, to be quite frank. Um, the best way to do that is you can still use like MailChimp or a constant contact. I would just copy all of your emails and, and put them into like one chain on, on constant contact because that's, that's free. What um, contact? I'm sorry? Constant contact. It's a, like a third party company, like constant contact or MailChimp. Like one oh, of those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Email, email your database and command outside the smart plans. Isn't really uh, working just yet. They're, they're still okay, figuring it. that okay, out. No worries. Yep. Now, uh, how about okay, birthdays? Uh, yeah, birthdays. Yeah. I was actually my next thing. So um, birthdays, the same thing. You're going to create the smart plan, but if you want to see the steps um, it's an interaction. So the first thing that's going to do is I think two weeks or four days, something like that. It's a couple days before it's going to remind you that this person's birthday is on April 1st. Um, you need to send a handwritten note or maybe like a gift card to them, something like that. So you're actually going to get prompted before the person's birthday that says, do this. We're going to wait four days and then you're going to call them, wait one day and then um, reach out to that contact again. So this one says post on their social media and then a text message will actually go out through the system. Now, if you want to create this, you just click on add smart plan, my birthdays, Click apply. This will then go over to my smart plans. And I look at my birthday, right on the second page. I can edit this one as well. So if there's something you want to change here, you could absolutely do it. So if you're not going to send birthday cards, I could just get rid of this. Uh, I could remove that one there. Can I get rid of it on touch? Uh, maybe I can't get rid of that one. Can't delete that one. Doesn't look like it. Um, 
but you can you can tweak some stuff here. So if you want to change your touch, touch task, um, you can just kind of remove it, I guess, get rid of the verbiage there. Um, but here's here's something that's going to be really really important. So whenever I get to the text message down here, um, this used to say happy birthday and then first name. This is what it used to look like. So I can come in here and add this function key. And do contact first name. Um, be very very careful in what you name your people in your database. So um, whenever we first rolled out Smart Plans, um, I tested it on myself. Like I said, I created a, a consumer version of Sam. And I, I just changed my birthday to the next day. And whenever I woke up or the next day, I got a text message from my, my fake realtor that said, happy birthday, Samuel. And I got creeped out because this is a test. I wasn't expecting it because I kind of forgot that I'd done it. And then two, I started thinking, what would happen if I received a text message from my realtor that said, happy birthday with my formal first name? And nobody calls me Samuel, not even my, my, my parents. Um, so what would have been a really nice intention of receiving a text from my real estate agent got really, really creepy, creepy and informal because no one calls me Samuel. So just be very, very mindful if you're going to use certain things like these, um, like these merge fields or these um, uh, subject fields um, that your data backs that up. So like go informal with their first name, like have a bunch of like Sam, Steve's and Chris's versus Samuel, Stevens and Christopher's. Um, Air on the side of being informal so that it's not creepy whenever you send them automated information from the system. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and the other part of this too is because we have this functionality within command, make sure that you are um, separating your spouses. So don't create a contact that says Sam and Krista Jackson because I, I would receive a text on whoever's birthday that says happy birthday Sam and Krista or thanks for coming to my open house, Sam and Krista. It might be weird. Make sure that you're creating everybody as a primary contact. Cool. Any questions on smart plans? I'll take the silence as a no. All right. Um, oh yeah, here's the other thing though. Um, so the system is not magical. I know a lot of our agents um, wish it were. Uh, it's not magical though. So like if, if I were to create a contact, for example, and I'm looking at Adam Zenzer, I don't think I have his birthday in command. Let me take a look real quick. So I, I do not, I don't have Adam's birthday. Therefore, if I set him up on a birthday campaign, he's not gonna receive anything. I could add him to that smart plan, but nothing will go out because we have nothing to go off of. So a lot of times with your smart plans, excuse me, it requires that you have certain data. So like those neighborhood nurtures and those um, smart plans that we have with the real estate data, we can't send them information if we don't have it. I can't send them, here's the snapshot for your neighborhood if we don't know where they live or what neighborhood they're in. Um, I can't send them a birthday card if I don't know when their birthday is. So just be mindful that if your stuff's not working, it's probably because you don't have strong enough data on your folks. Um, and that's gonna be one of the most important things that you're gonna be doing while you're kind of cold calling or calling your database to form strong relationships, get the data that you're missing. You want to have a really good health score here. Now I say that very, very lightly because I, I would highly recommend not focusing on this health score at all. Um, find the information that's really, really important. But if you were to come to me and say, Hey Sam, I'm so proud of my database. I have a health score of hundred percent. That tells me you're not growing new business because you should not, you should never have hundred percent. That tells me you're not getting new leads. Uh, you're not getting a relationship with people. You're just kind of, checking off all the boxes, getting the information that you have. We want to have um, a nice balance of uh, leads with no information and good data on everybody else. All right, referrals. This is one of the coolest tools. This is by far uh, the strongest tool or at least the most, uh, the oldest tool that we have in command. Um, this can be a little bit confusing because we have a referral network, which is essentially like our version of LinkedIn. You can connect with agents across different states um, and even globally to find uh, referral partners that you can use. So you're like creating a network and then you have actual true referrals. So um, a lot of times we confuse these, but if I wanted to uh, actually send a referral out, I can go to the map and I could go to the search bar up here and let's just go to Sandwich, Massachusetts. Click on Sandwich. This will zoom me into the map. And um, what I'm seeing over here on the right hand side are 251 agents uh, within the Sandwich, Massachusetts area. So all of these dots combined makes up for 251 agents. 
Uh, I can keep zooming in. I'm gonna keep going in tighter and tighter to the city of Sandwich itself. And I can see my list over here on the right hand side gets smaller and smaller. So I'm now down to 41. Now, if I am looking for a particular type of agent, I can switch this uh, production, excuse me, I can go over to uh, filters on the right hand side and sort by specialization. So a maps mastery client means that this particular agent spends a thousand dollars a month for, for a coach. Um, that would indicate to me that this person's definitely serious about their business uh, and somebody that I would trust from a referral standpoint. So this is one that I'd probably mark off. Or if I have a luxury property, commercial land, I can find all these different things. KWYP stands for young professionals. I can go, I can go by total closed units. So I can make a judgment call based on how many total units they've closed. Or if I'm giving a listing or buy side referral, I may put more weight into, okay, who does more listings or who does more buyers and apply that filter. Now I'm gonna back up a little bit here. Another neat feature is you'll see these dots right here. That does not represent that that's where the agent lives or that's where their market center is. That actually tells me where they've sold a home. So um, I don't know if there's anyone in this, um, in this meeting who kind of transferred or relocated from a certain area, but if you're looking for a referral partner and you have a client that specifically lives on Wood Avenue in Sandwich, Massachusetts, I could literally find an agent who sold closest to that property. Um, that tells me that they're the local expert and I could find specifically someone who sold. So Sandy Skinnell um, would be that agent who sold property when whatever subdivision this is. In fact, she sold two. So I can trust that she would probably take care of my client uh, better than if I were to zoom out and pick some random person on this list of 17 or further out. Now, the other really, really cool feature about this is let's just say that I have trust issues and I don't want to send that proper or that uh, referral to just Sandy. Um, I can do what's called a broadcast referral. So I have to zoom in close enough in which I have less than, I change the number on me, or no. I think it just be less than 50. Let me see where that number is. 95 is too many, 41 is okay. So it must be under 50. Um, I can pick on this broadcast referral button and I'll put in all the information that, you know, says what the referral fee is, um, what the acceptance to, um, to agree to my, my referral network. Uh, but let's just say that I want to jack this up. Um, times are tough. I need 30% on this. I can give them 10 hours to respond. I can give them some information about the property itself. But what's gonna be really cool about this is if I fill out my client information and I click send broadcast, let me see, I'll just create a fake one here. And I feel bad for the folks in Sandwich, Massachusetts who are going to get a fake lead from me. Water bottle real quick, oh, sorry about that. James Halpert. Jim Halpert. Boy, Trout. No, he's in there. Okay. So I can pull up a contact that's in my database and I can send this referral out and I can broadcast it to 41 people all at the same time. So whenever I click this, I fill a little bit of information. When I send this, all 41 agents are going to get a ping on their device that says, hey, there's a potential referral opportunity in San Jose, Massachusetts from Sam Jackson, an agent in North Atlanta. Now, what's really cool about this is that there's probably a good chance that all 41 agents aren't going to respond. This is a good test for me to tell me, okay, if a person really, really wants my business or they want this referral opportunity, they're gonna respond really, really quickly. And we can even negotiate maybe a higher or lower um, referral fee with that person. So if somebody gets back to me in the next like two minutes, I may say like, hey, great, I really just wanna make sure you're gonna take care of my mom, my client, whoever, this person who's important to me in this area. Uh, but this kind of takes a lot of pressure off of, um, you know, telling it if, you know, whoever, whatever person's on this list is even in business anymore, which is a cool feature. All right. Next one, opportunities. Um, opportunities is incredible. So when, when you talk about the, the current climate, opportunities is a tool within command that can probably save um, real estate agents and teams probably a couple thousand bucks a year on um, some different services like Trello and, and um, a lot of, honestly, a lot of like admin time that's wasted 
um, calculating your sales and some other things. Um, but uh, the pipeline tool or opportunities here is basically like a snapshot in your business. So this is a way for me to keep track of instead of going through and um, drawing up on a, on, a, on a whiteboard or a chalkboard all of my buyers and sellers, I can create what we call opportunities in command, which tells me not, exa not only what I have my pipeline, so I have four that I'm cultivating, two that are meet, who are meeting with me, and then I have five deals that are active and under contract, me, seven deals that are active under contract, and one closed, that predicts my income for me, uh, and then also keeps me organized. So I can actually create my business and say, hey, I met with Krista Busey, I'm gonna move her into an appointment. Now she's an active appointment, I can move her up to an active client, and I can kind of walk my clients through this process without kind of scratching and erasing things off my dry erase board. And the further this person gets through my pipeline, once they're under contract, I'll see that my income actually increases. So before I was at like 92,000, now I'm at 94. So it takes your, essentially like your whiteboard, uh, which is relatively dumb. It makes this incredibly, incredibly smart. Um, there's some other features in here as well in which we actually do like the e-signature part of it. Um, so this is where we'll have DocuSign integrated to where I can uh, create a new opportunity, uh, mark it as a listing. Let me see here. Mark it as a listing, put my commission in, track all of this stuff, click create. And then I can get all of my documents and put it into here. I can send them out uh, to my clients uh, by creating a transaction. Uh, and then all of the documents will come right back into command. Um, this is a huge time saver for anyone who is using uh, like dot loop right now because, because we have everything built into command, I'm already pulling the contact information. I already have Krista's information in place. Um, I then don't have to re-enter it into uh, dot loop or DocuSign. It's already here because we're staying on command the whole time, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then eventually too, once you go through this process, you can submit multiple offers. Um, like to your seller in the situation, you can present those to them. And then also the commissions tab, which is essentially what will calculate your, uh, your green sheet, which is how we understand what it is you're being paid for as, a, as an agent, which is a huge time saver as well. Uh, for those of you who don't, um, who are new to real estate, green sheets are a huge pain in their end. Um, the math isn't always fun. The commissions makes this really, really easy. All right. Campaigns, the next tool. This is by far the most popular tool within Command. Um, this is where across Keller Williams as a, a corporation, um, we are getting internet leads for about $2 per lead, um, which is about $3 cheaper than the entire industry. It usually costs about five bucks per lead. Uh, we're getting them for two. The North Atlanta office, because I can tell you this um, quite confidently, we are getting leads for about 50 cents a pop, so 50 cents a lead. So we're actually outperforming Keller Williams as a company uh, here locally. So this is where I can come in and I can create all kinds of things from um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter ads. I can create Google ads. I can do social, me social media posts, which is just free. I can go through and schedule my entire week of social media all at once. It'll go out to my Facebook page and uh, confidently go there. Um, we can do postcards in Kamel, in, excuse me, in command which is something I absolutely love. This is one of my favorite uh, features within campaigns um, because it takes mail and makes it smart again. You can actually um, narrow it down to like a certain street. I can send literally a postcard a week to two people if I chose to. There's no minimum amount of postcard uh, information there. And then uh, eventually we'll have email kind of tied into this once command mail is uh, fully functioning. Um, but I would highly recommend, uh, I have a couple different videos on how to create ads within command. Uh, one for listings and then one for um, one for listings and one for uh, Keller Mortgage uh, and getting leads from that. Uh, and then I'm personally going to try and run an ad for recruiting as well. Um, so I'll share my results on doing a talent search to grow your downline through command. But they're super, super easy. Um, Pam, can you still hear me? Are you on the call? Uh, maybe she's not. May lost her. Um, I was running an ad for Pam at the moment. She got. We started last week um, on day one. By the end of day one, she had twelve leads, um, which is pretty cool. And I think at that point we had spent, I don't know, it was it was like ten bucks, if that. Um, so getting real results there. 
Um, I'm not going to jump into the rest of these in a lot of detail, but um, we have reports, which is where you can put your goals in. This gives you a really clear uh, idea of, I can put in my goals and put in my information of, I want to make $100,000 in real estate. We'll actually reverse engineer um, specifically how many leads that you need to get annually in order to make that. So my annual profit goal is, profit goal is 100,000. Um, that tells me that I need at least 2,000 leads in order to get there. Um, so once you have this number kind of clear, you can break that down monthly on what you need to do to help grow your business. Designs, is there anyone that's an avid Canva user in the audience today? Anyone familiar with Canva? I love that, yeah. Excellent, so basically we completely ripped off Canva and we built it in house. Um, Canva, Canva is really cool, I, I still use it from, from certain things uh, just because I have some templates saved in there but uh, we've essentially just ripped off Canva and what I love about command specifically is we have uh, a thousand templates within designs. Um, and what's great about them is instead of Canva where I take essentially like a car wash ad and I turn it into a real estate ad, everything in command is compliant with the local multi list. So like my ownership statement is in there. My, um, my market center logo is in there. Um, so I don't have to worry about getting in trouble from a compliance standpoint. Um, but we have um, a thousand templates that are preloaded in command. And the other cool thing is that um, the bottom 100 that aren't being used or aren't, um, aren't liked get recycled. We bring in a fresh um, 100 templates. I uh, don't remember how often. I don't know if it's like yearly or, or monthly, uh, but they've encouraged us that we're not going to get stale content. But you can come in here and I can click on, let's just say I have a new listing that was just listed. Um, I pick my goal on the left-hand side. I can pick where it's going to go. So this will format it for Facebook, Instagram, which is more of a square stories, which is more of a portrait, whatever. I can come in here, click on use, and this is super, super cool. This is gonna load up all my information. And uh, like Canva, you can create your own um, like design library, so you can save things like your, your different headshots, your different logos. Uh, so all of those are kind of saved in here as a little mini dashboard. So all the different logos I use are in here. But let's just, let me show you how quickly Sam. this is to use. Yes, Jessica. Hey, where, where did you go? I'm on the page for, for the designs, but I, this yep. is my design templates, but it's got email landing pages, social print. Yep. Where are you seeing all of it? Where am I? Cause I'm only go, have like four on here. Yeah, let me go back. So yeah, what you're seeing are the designs you've created already. So you're seeing this, but like a smaller version. No, I'm not even seeing any, I'm not seeing hardly any of my stuff. I mean, so you're just seeing this stuff up here with nothing else. And then I see all of that up there, but I, if I go to say social, there's only four on here. Okay, so these are these are your design templates. So these are all of them that I've created already. Right. Um, so if you've never played with designs, you probably won't have anything here. Okay, so do I go to um, that little plus sign at the bottom? Yeah, click on the plus sign. Are? Yep, click on the plus, plus sign. And this is really important too. Um, if I click on social, this is only gonna show me social media formatted things. Um, so like I can't come in stuff. here. Yeah, so. Um, if I go here, I can't find a trifold for, you know, my open house, but if I go to print, I can't find an Instagram. So you gotta be particular on which one you pick here. But if I go to okay. social, I'll find all that, all the web stuff print here. Um, import PDF. This is really, really cool. So if you like somebody else's style, so like, let's just say that you receive like an email or like a flyer from like a Berkshire Hathaway agent, you can scan it into your computer. You can import it as a PDF and then we can make it to where it's like usable. Um, we've basically cool. found a way to take somebody else's ad and break it apart and, uh, and tweak it. And then videos are cool in command. You can make those in like literally under a minute. Um, you can create videos in command, but let me show you social real quick. Yeah. But once you get on social, this is where you should see all of these templates here. Where did, um, Mark, um, his last name he did like Wallers. a video yeah Wallers. yeah he did like a neighborhood video thing yeah uh let me show you social real quick and then i'll do a video sure sure yeah um i'll show you how easy this is but let me pick on this one again yeah he did the videos are really cool um so if i'm going to swap out the dba name i can go to my logos take my white killer wings one just drag and drop. When I see it replace, like I did there, just let go with my mouse, it's now there. What I highly recommend, this is Sam Jackson best practices I'm gonna teach you today. For social media, never put in the street address. 
because they will just copy and paste that into Zillow. You want them to actually click on your ad. Um, and Jessica, do you have a listing right now by chance? I wish. No. Okay. Let me just type in. Yeah, go ahead. For your logos where you had the white um, Keller Williams North Atlanta, did you import that from somewhere? I only have the one red and gray. Oh yeah, I, I did import it. Yeah, let me um, let me show you real quick. Let me pull this listing up real quick and I'll go back to my library. So if I go to logos, you can add them to your library. So you have to have them saved on your computer. I'll show you how to do that. Um, so this one's just kind of saved out of the four that I'm allowed. But if you go to kwconnect.com. Is that from like the internet? Yeah, I, I think this is probably easier than the internet to get to it. But if you go to KW Connect, go to resources, and then marketing, your logos and branding is right here. Okay, thank you. And then if you scroll down on this page, um, you can type in 181. Are you in the North Atlanta office? Yeah. Okay, type in 181 and you can download every file that we have of this variation. So you'll get black and white, you'll get like the grayscale, you get all of those. Thank you. You'll get all of them. It's a huge zip folder. Um, so just make sure that you save those to your computer first before you try to use them. Um, yeah, but then you can drag and drop those. If I want to throw my headshot in, I could do that. Just double click it, put myself in here if I choose to, things like that. Um, but to swap out the listing, what's really cool is once I search for it, I can just take a listing photo, replace it over this large one, and that swaps out pretty easily. This makes it really, really cool whenever you have designs that have more of a collage. I can just come in and replace those really quickly. Or let's just say that I'm not doing one around a listing. If I were to go back to images in the top, um, this has my library, but if I were to click on this company tab, there's a ton of Keller Williams stock photography in here as well. Get rid of that. So if I want to use something like this stock photo, I can drag and drop that in too. There's a ton of it in here. Um, and there's also a place where I can click on the add button and I can plug in my Facebook, my Facebook pages, my Instagram, my Google Drive, my Dropbox. So if you have a ton of photos saved somewhere else, you can just integrate them into command. Good Lord, I don't want to click on Facebook. Let's see what happens though. Um, yeah, let's just see if I can put my pooch in here. That's a folder maybe. I can drag and drop, picture of my pup. Or a family photo, if I want to do something for like, you know, happy 4th of July, from your favorite realtor, things like that, you can, you can pull in your uh, social media images. It's pretty cool, I don't have to download them or find them. All right, and then uh, they just click on download and save them locally to your computer. And then let me go back and answer Jessica's question. Um, the other thing you can do within designs, if I click on this plus sign, I can click on video, click next. And then from here, I just search in neighborhood. So let me do Northern Oaks. Jessica, what neighborhood do you live in? Hold on one second. Let me go back and try and find where you are because I want to do okay, it with I'll, you. I'll go back. Me, I just went to me, des designs and click the plus sign again. Okay, hold on. I broke it. So on the main page of designs, click the plus sign, and then click video instead of social or print. Okay, I'm, I need to go back a little bit farther. One more. My designs. Okay, so now I'm back. Okay, sorry. Cool. Let's just click on next. video. Yeah. And I am, I am in, um, do you, uh, Providence um, Lakes? It's a, Was that links or lakes? Lake, L-I-K-E. Okay. And this is moving slow. Let's see what happens. Let me know if it hits yours. Um, it's it is, but it's not picking up uh, Georgia. 
So this I guess is I'm going to put Providence Lake, Georgia. See if that comes up. Okay. Yeah, this is feeling stuck right now. Oh, here we go. Providence Lakes. Um, yeah, it's not showing up. Is it potentially called something else within mm -mm. next door? Okay. Maybe maybe it's Providence Lakes. Let me see. Rhode Island, Rhode Island, Utah, Rhode Island. Let's see if I put Providence Lakes. Let's see. Nope. Load more. Yeah, sometimes there's multiple neighborhoods here. That's weird though, Providence. President Trump. Let me see. If uh, I have... Are you making? Uh. -uh. Let me see if I put my actual neighborhood in because this is that's a neighborhood that I'm trying to work. Providence Lakes. Okay. Um, I'll put in Providence Plantation. That's my neighborhood. Let's see if it shows up. Okay. It's slow on my end too. Could be working on it. No, I feel like a jerk, by the way, because I have six Kelly notifications from people in Sandwich, Massachusetts who want my referral at the moment. Um, so that works. Providence Plantation. It's not showing up here either. That's kind of crazy. Do you have to have a, an address maybe? Nope. No, it should, it should be based on neighborhood. I'm just putting like GA afterwards. I tried, I tried to put Georgia. See what happens here. If not, we'll just go with another one. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this, this spinning wheel is kind of alarming. I'm guessing they're doing something with it right now. It's, so it's not showing up because I'm, it's not, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm able to pull it up and it's not coming up. Okay. Let me try another one because I've, I've done videos for the, for another neighborhood. Let me see if it, it could just be a weird thing. Northern Oaks. Uh, hopefully they're adding another template. That'd be cool because right now it's just the one, the one version of the video. Northern Oaks coming. Okay, I'm just gonna use this one for now. Go ahead. So I can open else. up <laughs> Northern Oaks. Click next, uh, and then when I click next, it's gonna pull up all of the information that it has um, from next door, and then tie in the real estate information. Cool. So here's the name. So, so for the example, if it's, um, you could just override this, I guess, that um, you can just come and click any random neighborhood and change the name of it. Providence Lakes. What's the average sales price there? Um, 650. Okay. Change all that. Average home prices are on the rise, on the decline or holding steady. Holding steady. Okay. Average price per square foot. Mm. Don't know. Let's just put 200 for fun. We'll just say holding steady. Number of houses for sale. Let's just say three. Average days on market. Do 10. And then um, what we're doing too is we're pulling this information from next door as well. So what's really cool is that Kelly, like this, this, um, the artificial intelligence behind Kelly, um, we've given her permission to go into next door and read what's going on inside each of those neighborhoods. So Kelly's saying that, hey, most of the posts are talking about something that's RT, book loving, and into gardening, which is pretty cool. Um, now, if you wanted to, you can change these. You can pick from the drop-down menu. I was just saying to add something like dog lovers as well, or get rid of like book loving and add dog lovers. I can do that. Uh, I can verify, make sure my contact information is correct, make sure the brokerage information is correct, and then just click next. And this is going to create oh, one of this agent license number. It'll take about 10 seconds to make this video and you'll get a cool preview of it. And I'll be curious to see if the sound works on this or not. Now, Sam, uh, I just put in another neighborhood that's near me and it calculated a uh, average price point of like 459,949 and 67 cents. Okay. And then it calculated the square price per square foot. And it says there's three homes for sale. Okay. Um, average days on the market and everything. So they, so this is being pulled from the internet. Like this is numbers that are legit from the internet, right? 
Yes. Now I, I will, I will throw a little bit of caution in there because we have multiple multi lists because we have FMLS and Georgia MLS. Sometimes uh -huh. our, our listings get counted twice and that can throw off the stats. Um, so, so you so may want to edit them. Uh, okay. Just use your gut on this. Cause like the Zestimate people aren't expecting that it be 100% accurate. They're just going to expect that um, what their expectation is. They just want to know where's the market today from the last time they looked at this information. Is it better or worse? Okay. It's like a Fitbit. Like whenever I have like a Fitbit or an Apple watch, I don't care that I did 10,000 steps or 10,324 steps today. I just know, I want to know if I outstepped yesterday or if I outstepped last week. I just want to know if I'm making progress. I'm not looking for perfection. Um, so the same thing with like a lot of our data, we just want to know if I were to buy or sell, is the market better last yesterday or better a, a month ago? Um, from where it is today. Well, do you know our broker on this, the broker license number that it's asking yeah. for? We have to put that in. Yeah, it's uh, it's H, capital H dash 36119. Okay, thank you. And then you can always preview, preview these. Can you hear the banjo music? I can't, but I'm about to press play on mine just to see. Yeah, there's some cool banjo music that goes in the background. Let's see if I can put it on the mic. Yeah, now I can hear it. But then you get a chance to preview this just to make sure that everything in here is clean and what you like. Um, let me zip forward a little bit, but you'll see like the graphics in here. And then if everything looks appropriate, you can click on save. And what you're doing is you're saving that design. You're not saving it to your computer. You just want to make sure that you click on this refresh button. That'll then show up and then you can save it to your computer. Clicking on the three dots, then clicking download. Then you're going to save an MP4 to your, um, to your computer. But yeah, if, um, once you get the hang of those, it takes about a, a minute to make them, including watching it. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, any questions? So far, you guys feeling good? No, you thank you very much, it's great. Okay, all right, we got 15 more minutes left, so I wanna jump into, I think, a couple things that are really, really important. Um, does everyone have their website created? Do you know if that's something that was done for you with, uh, with Jennifer? I think mine is done. I've tried to update my, um, like my headshot on it, but I can't, but otherwise I think it's done. Okay. Yeah. So that's actually exactly where I was going to lead to next. So um, I'm going to show you, like, if you want to edit what's called your marketing profile, like if you've got a new headshot or if you want to change your bio, um, this stuff will feed to you like designs. It'll feed to your website. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so your marketing profile, uh, when you click on your name in the top right hand corner, click on your name and then go to settings again. And then over on the left hand side, it's, it's kind of buried, but if you click on connect settings on the left, the marketing profile. This will take you to where you can edit all that information. So if you get a new headshot or if you need to change anything, um, highly recommend doing this. But um, more things to be like, just hear me out on this one. Do not check this box that says use my information to brand my agent site until you've completed this. Like go through, complete this whole profile and save it. And then once this is complete, go in and click to make this active. Um, cause if you try to do that, like midway, it's going to throw off everything. Uh, just make sure that you complete your profile first, save it, and then, uh, connect the branding to your site. Um, now Casey, did you not have a headshot or you just had the wrong headshot? Like what was the, the issue? I just want a new one. I think okay. I was trying to update it in the wrong place thinking that it would like update across the board, but it didn't. Okay. Um, did you update it here or somewhere else? I can't, it was like two weeks ago. I think I updated it here though. Okay. Um, I'll try again. Okay. Uh, Cause there may be one other place that like, if it were in, like if I were to put my photo here and then click save, it may not hit my website. You may have to manually go in and fix it on your website too, but it should feed everywhere else. Um, let me go through this really quickly though, just to make sure uh, everyone's on the same page, but your headshots, your headshot. If um, you were to put a headshot in here and it's like scrunched or it's not formatted correctly, um, it's recommended that you change this to 360 by 360. 
Um, if you don't know how to do that, like there's websites called like pick resize that I recommend Canva is really easy to do it. If you're struggling, just send me your headshot. I can do this in like two seconds. I'll send it back to you with the proper formatting. But out of everything, you just want to make sure that like your face and your photo shows up exactly the way you want it to in this preview, because that's a good indication of what it's going to look like online. Um, when it comes to like your team logo or like further down, like the, uh, market center logo, if that's scrunched or the formatting is weird, don't worry about it. It shows up the way it's supposed to. Um, but your headshot will look exactly the way it does in this preview. Um, now team logo, um, this is not where you put in your Keller Williams logo. In fact, like don't, don't put anything in here if you don't have a logo, but this is a place that if you're on a team or if you're a solo or single agent with your own branding, you put that logo here. It's okay to leave it blank if you don't have a logo. Um, if you want to build a logo or if, if, if you want to do that, um, I'd highly recommend fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R. -E put that in the chat, F-I-V-E-R-R, fiverr.com. There we go. Um, this is an amazing resource. Uh, I've had probably, I don't know, probably a dozen logos made for, for, from Fiverr at this point. It's basically just like a gig website. You can pay people like 10, 15 bucks to create a logo for you. Um, but you want to make Sam, sure you're deep. Yes. I'm sorry. I just uh, tried to update my, um, my, uh, headshot stuff and it says image should be less than one megabyte. Yep. So, so it's, it's huge. Yeah. Just go ahead and send it to me and I'll, I'll fix it for you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. And I misspelled Fiverr. That's F I V E R R dot com. Oh, it keeps auto correcting me. Sorry. What, what was Fiverr? Fiverr.com. So this is where you can get your own logo made. Oh, cool. Yeah. So skip that. Those first two links I got autocorrected. Um, F I V R R dot com. Um, F I V E R R. Yeah. So it's like the number five with two R's. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So with your contact information, like you're going to put your name, your last name. If you're on a team, you'll put that in there. Um, your professional and job title, you can leave that blank if you choose to, or you can put something like your agent. Designations and credentials, I would put Realtor, but only if you belong to the Board of Realtors, obviously. Uh, don't get in trouble for using a copyright term if you're not using it. Um, and then for the bio, make sure you have something in here. So even if it's just something that says like licensed real estate professional at Kevin Williams, North Atlanta, that's fine. Just make sure you put something in here because this will feed the about me page on your website. And if you have nothing in here, it's going to break. Um, so put a temporary statement in here. Um, you can also use fiber.com to have somebody write a bio for you. So in the search box in Fiverr, you would just write like professional bio. They'll pay somebody 10, 15 bucks. They'll send you a questionnaire that says like, tell me three words that your friends describe you as, and what are your strengths? And they'll take those answers and put into a really nice bio for you or do what I did. I practice um, R and D, which stands for rip off and duplicate. Just go find another agent that has a nice bio and just jack it. Just don't plagiarize it. Um, now for your telephone numbers on your uh, profile, make sure that you are only putting in the digits, no special characters. So this is just 10 digits, area code, telephone number, no parentheses, no dashes. Um, your email you can put in, fax machine you can leave off completely, your website you can put in, uh, market center brokerage logo. So you have to put this in place if you want it to work on your website. The Market Center Broker logo is how I showed you how to do that earlier. You go to KW Connect, you go to um, Logos and Branding, and then search for 181 for your Market Center number. Market Center Brokerage name, you have to put in Keller Williams North Atlanta, or if there's anyone watching from one of the other market centers, you put in the actual brokerage name here. The telephone number, just copy and paste it from above, put in the actual address for the rest of these. And then if you're part of North Atlanta, the Market Center Brokerage license number is this one here. And then um, let me see if I have, I might have Roswell in here also. Roswell is H-45525, that second option. If you belong to either of those. Compliance, quickly going through this, you have to put each office is independently owned and operated. Um, that has been the statement forever. I would also highly recommend, or Melba recommended this, uh, also put in the brokerage name and telephone number in here as well. That way they're the shows up on your Facebook ads if you run them. So each office is independently owned and operated. Keller Williams, North Atlanta, 770-663-7291.
And then I skip the rest of this. You can put your social media in. So you go directly to your Facebook, YouTube pages and copy and paste those full links in. If you don't have any of these, you can always um, deflect or defer back to Kevin Williams. So I don't share my Twitter account professionally. Um, so I just use Kevin Williams Twitter account. I put in twitter.com slash KWRI. There with it, anybody clicks on the Twitter link on my website, they're gonna be directed to Kevin Williams, not me. And then if you wanna put in a Facebook pixel or Google Analytics, you can do that here. And then your app link uh, down below. And I'll show you how to get both of those here in a second. What is a Facebook save. pixel? So basically, like, um, have you ever like, bought anything on like Amazon and then you immediately go back to Facebook and then you see that thing that you were looking at on Amazon? Mm -hmm. uh, the pixel like basically lets you track your people online. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, for the most part, real estate agents aren't using it a whole lot, but if you wanted to, you could um, so go into your business the, account and get that. Okay. So your branded KW app link. Yep. Should we like, I don't know how to get that. Yeah, I should, I should, I'm going to show you to do that now. Yeah, there's an oh, easier sorry, way now. Sorry. Cool. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. That's exactly a great segue. Um, so to get that information for both, because if you don't know your website and you don't know your app link, um, you want to click on consumer on the bottom. It's like the last active icon that we have here. Uh, if you cannot see consumer, your screen might be zoomed in too far. You'll just want to click on um, the kebab, like the three dots in the top right-hand corner of Chrome and you can zoom out. Like I'm usually at like 70 or 80%. And then you can see that icon. So if you're missing consumer, um, you're zoomed in too far on, on your browser. So click on consumer. Um, then you'll go to site and app settings, which is over here on the right. And then URLs, which is kind of the, the second tab in the middle. And then you'll see both your subdomain for your website. So your website, like mine is HTTPS colon slash 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 samjackson.kdb.com. And then my app, um, I can actually copy this full thing, which is app.kdb.com and all that unique stuff. I can copy it in a new tab, paste it, and you guys can see what this looks like. It's just a landing page that says, curious about the trending in your neighborhood. Here's my app, it's branded to me. And there's a, uh, a button they can click to go either to the Apple iStore or the Google Play Store, or they can get a text message with it. But that's how you'd wanna share that now. So then um, if you want to, you can copy this, go back to your marketing profile and paste it in there. Now, does everyone have a website? Does it show up for them? Yes. Okay. Um, so we'll just want to make sure they're active too. So when you go to consumer again, click on the middle tab that says agent site pages. You need to go back to consumer, but click on agent site pages. And you should see at least two active pages here. One that's about me and one that says contact us. Um, does everyone have at least those two? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to get back to where you were. Yeah. You can just click on consumer, the applet on the left. Were we under, um, settings? I go under settings and then, uh, connect settings, marketing profile. Are you up to it in the, um, the app link? Marketing profile. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then once you update that, yep. I'll just come back to, to this. Brokerage phone number required. Seven, seven, uh, it's actually right above it, but 770-663-7291. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. I went from never memorizing telephone numbers to when you duplicate them as often as, as I do, they start to stick. Um, but if you wanna, do you, do you, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, do you think that this is why my app was not working the other day? Remember I I messaged you the other day about, I had sent it to somebody and they, um, it was giving them like an error. Um, no, it should be, it should be working. I don't think those two are related. Um, okay. what might be related though, is if, if I were to go to site and app settings, like on my screen, if this is not branded to you, like if you're, if this isn't green, that may impact uh -huh. it. 
Hold on, let me let's see settings. Where, where, where did you go to get that? Uh, I went to site and app settings in the top right hand corner. Uh, I don't see that. So go to consumers or on consumer down here. Oh, gotcha. And then site and app settings up here. But if you have this marked to use your branding, it should, should work appropriately. It says use my information to brand my agent site, yeah. Yep, yeah, you should be in compliance. Um, if you didn't have the broker telephone number, that could be why it was kicking out too, because that's required for the websites. That could have been it. Okay. Okay. I'll text her yep. again and ask her to redo it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and yeah, but if you want to, um, build out your website, um, probably the easiest way to do that is if I were to click on agent site pages, which is this middle tab, um, you should have this configure button over here, configure your site. I know sometimes that disappears. If you don't see configure your site here, just scroll on down. It's always here at the bottom left. Uh, and this is where you can go in and um, in case this is maybe where you have to update your headshot. Uh, Cause if this is loaded for you, you may have to just kind of jump through this, this widget really quickly. Um, and then when you scroll down on the right hand side and open up your marketing profile, um, there's an opportunity for you to update your headshot. Um, if that shows your old one in place here, that could be why. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, and then um, just make sure that your websites are working, but you should be good to go. Um, what I'd highly recommend too is like right now, my website is samjackson.kw.com. I would highly recommend that all of you go to um, like GoDaddy and just purchase your name. Like if you can buy like jessicabuxton.com, like absolutely do it. Um, Cause it's gonna be easier for your marketing to say, hey, go to jessicabuxton.com versus go to jessicabuxton.kw.com. It's just like too much for your clients to remember. Um, it's just easier from a marketing standpoint. And what I love about that too is you also control it. So let's just say, God forbid, something were to happen with command and we go a different direction with our websites. Or if you decide that um, you're no longer gonna stay at Keller Williams and you go to Cobble Banker, you own your own marketing, you own your own vanity domain, but you could change it to like jessicabuxton.cobblebanker.com. Your clients won't be any different because they're still just going to jessicabuxton.com. I'm not encouraging or condoning that you guys do that, but I'm just saying from a marketing standpoint, it always makes a lot more sense that you're in control of um, what you're putting on your business cards because you don't technically own samjackson.kw.com. KW could change it at any moment and then you might be screwed and have to rewrite all of your business cards. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, um, I am a minute over, but do you guys have any questions or is there anything else you'd like me to cover during this time? Was this helpful? I know this is really, really basic and elementary today. No, it's extremely helpful because a lot of it is stuff that I've been procrastinating. Like, so going through each little tab of this has been great because each little tab is what I've been procrastinating. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if that's, if that's the case, I would, I would check out um, as much as I promote my own YouTube channel. There is one by Marty Miller uh, called the command 66 day challenge. Basically he posts a new video every single day on one thing that you can learn within command. And it's usually like a two minute thing. Um, I would highly recommend that if you want to just get integrated into using these, but he walks you through a really simple how to it's like two minutes on how to do something. Awesome. But Marty Miller, um, Command 66 Day Challenge, and I think he's up to like the fourth version of that now. All right, what else? I heard a couple people speaking in there. Uh, it was very helpful to me. Good, cool. Yeah, thanks, Sam. A lot to digest, but we look forward to implementing a lot of this. Yeah, yeah, and, and keep jumping into classes. Um, if you are looking for additional resources, um, there's a couple different places you can go. Uh, Answers.kw.com is a great one uh, if you're having trouble with certain things. Um, I've built my own YouTube channel. Um, and since my name is Sam Jackson, it's really hard to find me online. But if you go to incommandwithsam.com, this will forward you directly to my YouTube channel. And apparently I didn't do that appropriately. Incommandwithsam.com. Uh, but I have a whole YouTube channel on how to do certain things. Um, so if you to come in here and go to my actual page, I think I'm logging this myself. Um, 
I have a couple different playlists. Like I just created this one. Sorry for the dogs barking. Um, Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, I created a playlist of navigating commands step by step, tool by tool. So the first two videos in here right now are what I taught you today. But if you want to just go through in progression on where the next thing you can do a command, um, this is a great playlist to do it. Or just feel free to jump around and play around with these. Um, I'm not monetizing this, but if you want to um, subscribe to it, you'll get notifications anytime I create a new video. And usually I'm trying to keep up whenever we do have something new in command. I post it pretty quickly on the newest things we can do. How do we watch back today's uh, class? Um, I actually don't know. I'm going to, um, once we end this, I'll probably get a link. I don't know if it's going to be in my uh, Zoom recording or if it's in the Georgia Legacy groups, but we'll get the link and we'll send it out. I'll post awesome. it, uh, post it somewhere, but I'll let you know. And have a great evening. Thank you, Barry. You too. Nice to virtually meet you. All right, guys. Y'all have to take care. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks, if anything Sam. else, I'm going to be around. Just uh, give me a shout. Thank you, Sam. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.